we saw in our previous module that people had established that DNA is a hereditary molecule. The year is 1944. The race is on. People want to study how this molecule functions. So let's talk about that. So first of all, let me again show you the structure of DNA. DNA is made up of a pentose sugar. To that pentose sugar, a base is attached at carbon number one, and we have a phosphate group that is attached to carbon number five. And we have five bases. Four bases that are present in DNA are cytosine, thymine, adenine, and guanine. And in RNA, instead of thymine, we have uracil. These are polymers. DNA is a polymer made up of nucleotides. And this is basically what people came to know using certain experiments: the chemical nature of the monomer of DNA. Additionally, people wanted to see the structure of DNA. It was initially hard to determine the structure of DNA. The technique which is used to look at structures of molecules is X-ray crystallography. The trick is that you have to have the crystal prepared in a specific way. It was hard because DNA is long fibers and people needed DNA in uniform orientation to be able to decipher the structure, the three-dimensional structure of DNA. Basically, position of atoms within the DNA molecule. People worked their way through this. People were able to finally make these special crystals of DNA and determine that DNA is a helical structure. Additionally, an important discovery by Shargoff, which is also referred to as Shargoff rule, is the amount of adenine base equals thymine base amount of guanine base equals cytosine base. As we know, the A and G, adenine and guanine are purines, and thymine and cytosine are the purines. They are the smaller molecules. So with this information available, two scientists made the landmark discovery, Dr. Watson and Dr. Crick. They came up with the DNA model. And not only they were able to make DNA model from 10 they also were able to predict some of the functions of DNA, how DNA, for example, would replicate itself. Here on the screen, you can see these two scientists looking at the three-dimensional model of DNA. They were able to previously work looking at the information from X-ray crystallography experiments. They figured out the DNA structure and they noticed, they also considered, they factored in Chargaff's rule and they came up with these Conclusions. DNA is a double-stranded helix. It has a uniform width. A and T, G and C, they fit in almost perfect way that both these combinations maintain the width of the DNA uniform. They also, they also proposed the right-handed coiling of DNA. Right-handed coiling is sort of the threads around a normal wood screw that we have. That is the way the DNA is turning on itself. They also predicted, they, they also uh, figured that DNA is anti-parallel. I've already told you what anti-parallel is, but we will look at the DNA structure in more detail in the next module. They also, uh, they also were able to figure out that complementary, as I mentioned, A and T and G and C allowed DNA to have a uniform length. In the next module, we'll look at the DNA molecule in more detail.